Hi everyone, I am Surabhi and I run Luchi and Mutton's Dog Behavior and Nutrition. I am based out of Gurgaon and I offer private nutrition and behavior consultations for pet parents and dog caregivers. Welcome to another episode of the Luchi and Mutton's podcast. I'm very very excited about this episode because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things and that's enrichment and dogs. As always, please share what stood out for you in the episode with me. There is a question at the end of this episode um, in the description that you can fill out and I'll have a chance to look at your replies. You can also connect with me by email at surabhi at luchianmuttons.com or follow me on Instagram or Facebook under Luchi and Muttons. Social media descriptions will also be in the episode description. All right, so let's get right to it. Um, social media in general has really made enrichment only about food puzzles and different ways to offer food to our dogs. But enrichment for dogs is just so much more than that. It's really about creating a safe environment for our dogs to express natural behaviors in ways that can improve their quality of life and day-to-day -day living. So when we describe something as enriching, we're attributing it to enhancing or improving or strengthening the quality of something. And in the case of our dogs, it's really about enhancing their quality of life, well-being and overall welfare. There are scientific arguments for the same as well. So research has shown that enrichment can be extremely helpful in improving neural plasticity and even repair. It can enhance and improve learning memory consolidation, and even resilience to stress. It can build more confidence and curious behaviors in dogs and can also help in eliminating cognitive deficits. I'm going to share the names of the studies in the episode description below, so do give them a read. Um, there are also a ton of studies done on environmental enrichment for dogs in shelters and how just a little bit of exposure to either auditory or sensory environmental enrichment really helped dogs cope with stress and reduce the incidence of quote-unquote problem behaviors. I personally actually experienced this with Mutton, my second dog whom we adopted in 2020. Uh, so when she came to us, she was extremely anxious, very fearful, not very confident. She found outdoor experiences extremely overwhelming and was very, very triggered um, quite easily, in fact, by a number of different things in the environment. So taking her outside was just a very painful and difficult process um, that was also responsible in, you know, breaking down trust in our relationship. And so one of the ways that I decided to sort of address a lot of these things was by limiting the time that she spent outdoors and increasing her opportunity for enrichment indoors. And so I, I did this by, you know, curating um, experiences uh, inside the house for her to uh, navigate through and use her senses with by bringing a little bit of the outdoors into the house. Um, and what I found over a period of time is that with regular engagement, uh, she was opening up, she was coming out of her shell, she was definitely more confident, she was calmer, she was able to think and process her environment much better. And overall, I found that she was in a much healthier position to cope with a lot of what was overwhelming or overstimulating in the environment for her. And ever since then, enrichment routines have been a fairly regular part of my day-to-day -day with my dogs and I continue to see the benefits uh, of that in their behavior in the way that they're able to process the environment around them. And so there is incredible merit to adding enrichment routines to your dog's day-to-day -day life and like I said it can definitely go beyond food puzzles. Some of my favorite enrichment routines include sniffaris, which are essentially sniffing safaris for dogs, offering snuffle boxes or creating some sort of a snuffle garden, or even an indoor experience, like I said, where they can really sniff and explore objects and scents at their own pace and time, and in a way that makes them feel really safe and secure. And so this really doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. You don't need fancy toys for this. It's really about putting together safe day-to-day -day items that are likely to carry multiple scents and leave items that your dogs can really just sniff, 
Tatrin True. Even unwashed laundry, for example, can become a really exciting experience for our dogs um, that can have a very enriching outcome for them. And so what these routines also allow dogs to do is really express their natural behaviors of sniffing, of chewing, which can be hugely impactful to their emotional and behavioral health. And in my behavior consultations with clients where I see dogs coming in with quote-unquote problem behaviors, so many of those problem behaviors are actually rooted in not having enough access and opportunity to express natural behaviors. And so when we create these opportunities, we find that we're able to meet our dog's needs. And as a result of that, we're able to bring them to a place where they are more emotionally regulated, that they are calmer, uh, and that they're able to cope much better with the environment around them. And so one of the questions that I often get asked is, how do I know if an enrichment routine is appropriate for my dog? And so when we talk about environmental enrichment and its impact on dogs very specifically, we're essentially looking for impact in the way of calm behaviors that dogs can express. And so if you find that your dog is getting really worked up or extremely hyper or frustrated with something that they're engaging with, then it's probably not enriching and is causing much more frustration and stress than what we've designed this particular activity to do. And so I see this a lot with dogs who uh, have hyperactive behaviors around food, and then they're made to engage with these food puzzles that make accessing that food very hard and challenging. And so this can become an extremely frustrating experience for them as well. Um, the other thing that I often get asked is, you know, how about designing routines or designing experiences that keep the dog busy and keep them tired? And I think that there is a little bit of distinction that, that becomes important to bring about, right? I think one part of it is when our dogs are exerting their mind, when they are moving around very consciously, very thoughtfully, one of the byproducts of an experience like that is that they are likely to feel in a much more calmer, restful state. And that is likely to put them in a state of sleep as well. The, the key is really to be in a state of restfulness as opposed to being really tired and irritated and annoyed. Um, I think the other thing that happens is that when they are engaging in an activity that is enriching for them, that is keeping them involved, that is really, uh, you know, enhancing their curiosity, that's really helping them think and focus, they are likely to be busy doing that. So busyness and tiredness can be byproducts, but if that's the goal, then we're really going to create, uh, we, we run the risk of creating very frustrating, troublesome experiences for our dogs that might not be as enriching. So that's just something for us to keep in mind um, as well. I have a lovely blog, by the way, on enrichment for dogs that I will also link in the episode description. It's available on my website. So that's also something that you can definitely read through. I share a lot of enrichment videos on my Instagram page. So you will get a sense of what that also looks like. But if you'd like to know more about enrichment options for your dog, feel free to reach out and connect and I will be more than happy to guide and support you. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening in and do let me know what resonated with you. And of course, stay tuned for the next episode.